Welcome to another edition of a Karate Kid alumni interview. Today's guest is Mr. Ron Thomas, a.k.a. Bobby Brown. How you doing, Kenny? Bobby Brown was Johnny's right-hand man, in case you're all wondering. He's the guy that had the most sympathy out of everyone, as he was the one that told Johnny to leave him alone. And he also was the one that broke Daniel's leg on Crease's behalf. Bobby didn't want to do that. He wanted to win the tournament. <laughs> he didn't want to get disqualified. I agree with you. Yes, so uh, today Ron is going to be sharing some behind the scenes stories of his time on the Karate Kid. Well, uh, first of all, thanks for having me on your show, Kenny. Cobra Kai has uh, really taken off. It's kind of strange that we're talking several decades later. I'm sitting here on a Zoom meeting. You know, back then we didn't even have anything called Zoom, much less the internet, much less a cell phone. Uh, <laughs> that's how long it's been since we shot the original Karate Kid. My character, Bobby, has, of course, evolved to become a pastor. He had the most conscience of all the Cobra Kai. He was uh, trying to keep everybody straight, keep Johnny straight, uh, leave him alone, man. He's had enough. He knew when we were crossing the line and he wasn't afraid to step up to anybody to tell him, so even Kreese, when Kreese was choking Johnny in the parking lot. So Bobby, of of course, evolved to become a pastor now on Cobra Kai and still trying to keep everybody in line, do what's right, keep everybody doing the, down the right path. But he still has that inner conflict where he's still a Cobra Kai. So he's not afraid to go into a bar, have a few drinks and uh, get in a little bar brawl. So uh, <laughs> it's kind of a cool character now uh, as, you know, being a pastor. But the original question is, you know, how did I get the role? Well, of course, I was an actor. I've always been an actor and I was in Hollywood. And uh, here's a little behind the scenes story that some of your viewers may not know. I am a black belt. Before I ever even moved to Hollywood, I was already training in jujitsu and uh, was a black belt. At the time of the audition, uh, my agent calls and says, I'm gonna have you read for this movie called The Karate Kid, which I think I'm not alone in the cast when, when we heard the title of the movie, we thought, well, that's just, Kind of a dumb title. Beyond that, my agent says, and when you go in to read, do not say anything about your martial arts background. I'm like, what are you talking about? Don't say anything. It's, the movie's called Karate Kid, and you don't want me to tell them that I know anything about martial arts. No, because they want to know that you're a good actor. And they're going to train you anyway in the martial arts with this guy called Pat Johnson. Just talk about your acting and focus on that. If they ask you if you have any training, tell them. Beyond that, don't mention it. I got the part, obviously. I first read for Johnny, actually. And then they cast me as Bobby. And uh, it wasn't until about six weeks into rehearsals that Pat Johnson, our fight choreographer, came up to me and said, you have a little bit of experience, don't you? You know something. I said, yeah, I'm a second degree black belt. <laughs> what was it like working with the rest of the cast? I think it's a testament to how much fun it was working with them that all these years later, we're still friends, that we've been th friends through the years. I know that there was a scene that was supposed to be in the Karate Kid. After you had injured Daniel, you had grabbed your black belt and you threw it in Sensei Kreese's face. And yeah, so I, I injured Daniel and Kreese is on the other side of the tournament floor. And I just, that's it. Bobby, again, it goes back to the testament of, of Bobby and his, the character of Bobby, um, willing to stand up for what's right. And knew he'd done wrong, knew he'd, he sold his soul to the devil, <laughs> went out there, disqualified himself hurt Daniel, none of that he wanted to do. And then that was it. So he gets up and he walks across the floor taking off his black belt and he and drops the belt at Sensei Kreese's feet and walks out of the tournament. Of course, nobody saw that because we didn't use it. I would have liked for them to use that this way could show what how much empathy Bobby has. There was a, a delay in in the ending of the movie. There was some confusion about how we were going to actually end the movie versus what was in the script. There was some time issues. Uh, they had to wrap the movie before the, you know, it was like New Year's Eve when we were shooting and they had to wrap it before, before it turned into the new year because of uh, tax issues and, and production issues, et cetera. We didn't have time actually to film what was in the parking lot and they needed Bobby to be in that scene. Cause it was, so it wouldn't have made sense for him to take his belt off and leave and not be out there in the parking lot. And so there's all this, you know, story tweaking at the end. And, and this is what goes into movie making a lot of times. It's just last minute decisions for, for those reasons, you know, they, they just didn't use 
that particular scene. But it would have it would have been nice for people to see that, and it would have been a nice exclamation point on Bobby's character, you know, and and the the character development of who Bobby was. It really showed it. Really was a testament to who Bobby was deep inside, willing to know when he's gone way over the line and he's had enough. Leave him alone, man. He's had enough. But Bobby had had enough, and that was it. Yeah. After Bobby apologized to Daniel, he he was not seen again for the rest of the movie. He wasn't even in the crowd when uh, Johnny got kicked in the face either. Right. Here's another thing. Uh, as an actor, I would have loved to have seen this, but I was told that there was a, one of the stories in consideration for Karate Kid Part 2 was Bobby would have gone over to the other side and been Daniel's friend and then returned to help uh, fight against his old friends of, of Cobra Kai. So Bobby would have been a part of Miyagi-Do instead of Cobra Kai. Um, if they had followed through with that whole line. I noticed in Karate Kid 3, all the students had abandoned Kreese. I'm surprised Dutch abandoned them of all people, because Dutch, he was a total sociopath. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Chad McQueen played a pretty good sociopath. That's huh? crazy. <laughs> Thanks again, Ron, for taking your time to be on my hands.